final part of this is uh, that you're often asked in examinations, <coughs> excuse me, is um, to examine the nerves of the hand. Now, I was trying to keep this all as sensory exam only, but I think when you're examining the nerves of the hand, one has to uh, do the motor and the sensory part for, for clarity's sake. So I'm going to ask Peter, Peter to sit up, if you don't mind. And I'm going to, when examining the hands, even in rheumatology or anything, really, you'll be told for the rest of your lives to put a clear pillow on, uh, for the patient and explain once again what you're up to. So, as everything in neurology, the first thing you must do is observe, and you look at the back of the hands, and you look for muscle wasting, uh, you look for um, any fasciculations in the hands, and then you ask the patient to turn the hands over, and you check in areas, again, small maps, the thinner eminence near the thumb, the hypothenar eminence near the little finger, and you compare like with like to see is one less bulky, for example, than the other, is there wasting somewhere? And these are, these are key uh, initial uh, impressions to get. There are three nerves coming from the cervical spine, into the cervical spine into the brachial plexus, and into the hand. These are the median, the ulnar, and the radial. <coughs> these can all be tested on a motor level through the thumb. So, as a, as a top tip someone um, more learned than myself once gave me, if you could put your thumb in line with your index finger, the median nerve supplies abductor pollicis. Now remember, C7 is a dermatome, but it serves as the fulcrum around which all movements in the hand uh, revolve. So if something is moving in, uh, towards it, it's adducting to this third finger. If it's moving away from it, it's abducting away from it. For example, if I want to abduct the thumb away, uh, abduct the thumb, it'll be away from this third finger. So I stabilize the hand and ask Peter to bring your finger up to my finger, and that's abduction. So abductor pollicis thumb, abduction of the, pol of the thumb away from this uh, third finger is mediated by the median nerve. So to test median nerve function, motor function, you'd go for abductor pollicis. To test ulnar nerve function through the thumb, you want to do adductor pollicis, so it must adduct towards the third finger. Can you bring your finger in towards me? That's adductor pollicis, ulnar nerve tested. And back. To test radial nerve function, you extend it away from the thumb. Always, I say, uh, I often say, just hitch a lift. So can you extend your finger as far as you can? Just turn it over so we can see, and you can see the tendon of extensor uh, pollicis longus. So, and if you bring your thumb back, that's a quick way of doing the motor aspect of it. There are more uh, complicated ways for the median. You can do abductor pollicis once more, and down again. Then you can do opponens when you bring your thumb to your little finger like that. And keep them to there, keep them together, and don't let me pull them apart. So uh, the median nerve supplies the, lum the lumbrical, opponens pollicis brevis, abductor pollicis brevis, and flexor pollicis brevis. And then to test the rest of the median, you test sensation of the median. Now, the median nerve comes from the plexus. There's two cords join up to form the main median nerve and it passes under the carpal tunnel where it's most frequently trapped. So it then supplies the first, the second, the third, and half the fourth. Three and a half fingers, uh, so, uh, the sensation to those three and a half fingers in the palm of the hand. So people say the common thing to do is uh, I get pins and needles in my hand, usually at night I wake up, I shake it like this, it goes away, and you can almost tell on the telephone that it was carpal tunnel syndrome. There's lots of predisposing causes. To check it though, you say, well, is it this finger, this finger, this finger? And people can be very unclear, understandably. So you ask them to hold up this finger, their fourth finger, and you touch the inside of it near the patient, which is the ulnar area, and the outside of it, which is the, uh, near me, which is the median area. You ask the patient to close their eyes, and you say, is there any difference between the inside near you and the outside? And if there's a median nerve deficit, they might say, yeah, actually, it feels a little bit more numb or a bit different sense uh, in terms of sensation on the inside here than it does on the outside here. Tenel sign uh, is, is one that you use to check for carpal tunnel and you tap over the flexor retinaculum like that and it can cause pins and needles if the tunnel is a little full into those three and a half fingers. So that's median nerve testing motor and sensory and they really should be taken together. From the ulnar uh, nerve perspective we can do a cheats way and again using the thumb we can say, if you could bring your thumb into the uh, third finger here, that's adductor to uh, adductor pollicis. And that's a, a quick way of doing it. But the ulnar nerve also supplies the interossei. In fact, it supplies most of the small muscles of the hand. So in motor terms, 
you've got the interossei, inter if you turn your hand over, which move away from the uh, third finger, so they abduct away, and they move towards the third finger, they adduct too. Adduction is the easiest one, uh, is, is relatively easy to test. Abduction is easier. For example, if you spread your fingers as wide as you can, and don't let me push them together, a quick screening tool will show that I'm now testing, for example, abductor digiti minimi, the little finger being abducted away. So I'm testing these ones, and roughly speaking, this will test the, um, the abducting interossei. Inter to test the adducting, going in towards the uh, third finger, we take a clean sheet of white paper, we place it between the index and third finger of uh, Peter's hand. Can you grab that, please? Now, he holds it like that, so it's his right hand. It's his index and, and uh, third finger. So I must do the same, my right hand, index, and third finger, and we compete. So I say pull. So we can see the adducting index here. If I move it to another interspace, if you like, I must move myself as well, so that now we've got the equivalent fingers, pull. And then if, we use the, if I move to his left hand, for example, I must change to my left hand, and the same fingers equivalent, and pull. So again, he's, uh, if you just take that up there, he's adducting his finger in here like that. So uh, the ulnar nerve then supplies only one and a half digits of the hand. It's quite a simple sensory distribution. If you turn over your hand, it tends to get trapped most frequently up around the elbow area. And sensation tends to, and you can usually find it yourself, if you tap here, you can produce some tingling into your own little finger. Um, but it supplies the only other one and a half fingers left. So median was one, two, three and a half. So not surprisingly, ulnar is one and a half. So same test, really. You just say, I'm going to touch the inside near you, the outside near me, um, and tell me, and ask them to close their eyes and tell me which is different. And if it's an ulnar nerve sensory problem, it should affect this and this. And it's very frequent that people worry about it and think they've got MS, when in fact they're just trapping the nerve at work, working a computer, repetitive strain, etc. It's not a major deal. For the radial nerve, I ask people, uh, it's fairly straightforward, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but wrist drop, as everyone knows, is the problem of radial nerve. If you hold your hands out straight in front of you, straight out, and if Peter has a left wrist drop, I'm afraid it'll go like that. And it'll be as simple as that. And you'll say, well, that's the motor aspect done. And for the sensory aspect, it's mostly the back of the hand here. But again, the history is the key thing. These things come on, and you all know about a Saturday night palsy when you, uh, well, well, when someone, actually, maybe not yourselves, fall asleep on the back of a chair and trap the nerve, the radial nerve, in the spiral groove. Uh, in which case you wake up and you've got a wrist drop, which usually just a, a neuropraxis, which can go away in about six uh, to 12 weeks in, in, the, in most cases.